Welcome back everyone, it's Eric with two guys in a cooler.com. Today we've got a short little video on the Inkbird Humidity Controller. This is the IHC200. We're gonna talk about what this thing can do when it comes to controlling humidity inside of a room. And we're also gonna talk about how to program it. I've had a lot of requests to share my personal settings. So through this video, I'm also gonna share what I have this thing set at. It's also gonna be in the description box below. Before we talk about setting it, the first thing we want to look at is the sensor. Now, arguably, this is the most important part of the entire controller. The sensor is what actually reads the humidity in the room and then relays a message back to the controller to determine whether we need to increase or decrease the humidity. That is replaceable, and I'm going to put a link in the description box below if you want an extra one or if you need to replace the one that you have. And when it comes to placement, the sensor should never be directly in front of a humidifier. Try to mount it or place it somewhere central in the room that you're trying to control the humidity. The next thing we want to look at are the outlet options that come with the IHC200. And this is what makes this controller rather unique. With the IHC200, you have the capability of both increasing the humidity and decreasing the humidity in your room. Work 1 is designated for your humidifier. That's where that's going to get plugged in. And work two is designated for your dehumidifier. And depending on the values that you set, your humidifier or your dehumidifier is going to cut on at the appropriate time, allowing the humidity, which is work one, to either increase or work two, which is your dehumidifier, which will decrease your humidity. All right, let's look at the controller. And first, let me say Inkbird's a great company. Their product is easy to use. It's affordable and reliable. And I'm saying this because I also use controllers from Johnson and Auber. And although they're great controllers, um, they're about triple the price and not that much more accurate. Uh, Inkbird is actually quite accurate whenever it comes to temperature control and humidity control. So let's look at what's going to happen when you plug it in. The first thing you're going to notice when you plug it in is uh, the two digital displays. The top display is the humidity value that your probe is actually reading. And the bottom display is what you set your target humidity to be. In my case, it says 85, which is 85% relative humidity. Under that, you'll notice two lights. One will indicate that work one is active and the other one will indicate that work two is active. And then underneath that in the middle, you're going to have a set button, which is how you get to your menu. And then under that, you're going to have an up or down arrow key. All right, so let's get into the menu and go through all the settings. There's, there's not that many, and that way you could see exactly what you need to do in order to program this for your chamber. You want to hold the set button down for three seconds, and as soon as you let go, it's going to start flashing. The first setting is going to read HS at the top, and that stands for humidity set value. Whatever you put into that field is going to be the target humidity that you want your room or your chamber to be at. Now you can easily adjust that by pressing the up or down arrow key, and this will go all the way up to 99% and as low as 5%, so depending on what you've got going on. Once you're done setting it, you can press the set button one time, and it'll take you to the next value which will read HD. HD stands for humidification differential value. This particular value notifies the controller as to when to turn the humidifier on during its programming mode. For instance, my HD value is set at three points, and that basically means that if my starting humidity is 85% and my humidity differential is three points, my humidifier will not kick on until I reach 82% or lower inside my chamber. My recommendation is to set this between three and five. As you can see, mine is set at three, and I found this to be the absolute perfect setting to take into consideration lag between the humidifier and the dehumidifier. If it's too tight, if your numbers are too close together, your humidifier and your dehumidifier are gonna compete against each other, and they're gonna be turning on and off constantly, which is something you don't want. And just like the other settings, you can adjust your humidity differential by pressing the up key or the down key, depending on what value you want. Now, let's go ahead and hit the set button one more time, and we're going to get to a feature called DD. DD stands for dehumidification differential value, and this particular unit 
tells your controller when to turn your dehumidifier on when it's in the programming mode. So my particular setting is three points. And what that means is that if my humidity is at 85% and my dehumidification differential value is at three points, like you see there, what that means is that my dehumidifier is going to come on when the humidity in the chamber reaches 88% or higher. You can set the DD by pressing up or down on the arrow keys. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is called AH. AH is pretty simple. This stands for high alarm. Notice mine is set at 100. That means that if my chamber ever gets to 100% humidity, a buzzer goes off letting me know that there might be a problem. And when I hit the set button, again, it takes me to AL, which means low alarm. And that simply means that if my chamber ever gets to 50% humidity, a buzzer will go off letting me know that there might be a problem. The next option is one called PT, and that stands for delay protection value. Now this is pretty important if you have something plugged to the unit that has a compressor. This particular value is set in minutes. It goes from one to 10, and whatever value you set in there will delay the unit from kicking on by however many minutes you place. Incredibly important if you're operating something with a compressor, but because I'm putting a small humidifier and a small dehumidifier, neither of which have a compressor, I have mine set at zero. Typically, if you have something with a compressor, you might set your value at about three or four. And then finally, the last feature in the settings category is the calibration or CA feature. Normally your unit's gonna be set to zero, zero when you get it. And it is recommended that you calibrate your unit about once every six months. Once every three months is even better, but I found once every six months is sufficient. If you wanna know how to calibrate the unit, check out the link in the top right hand corner. Okay, finally, the last thing you need to know is that if you stay on any one particular setting too long, it automatically defaults back to its original menu and you have to start over. Now, the only way that this will record your actual changes is if when you're completely finished, you press and hold the set button for three seconds, at which point your settings are now saved and you can move on. If you don't press and hold the set button and your unit just cuts back off back into operation mode, then you have to go back in and redo all the settings. So there you have it. I hope that fully explains how to use the Inkbird IHC 200. If you have any questions, let me know. Stick around, I'm gonna do the temperature controller soon. Check out the description box below if you want a recap on my personal settings. A great big thanks goes out to the patrons of the channel. Thanks for your support, guys. And if you like what you see and you want to support our work, consider checking out our Patreon link in the description box below. Depending on the tier, you can either have awesome discount codes, early previews to videos, or the best one, me as your personal instructor in your charcuterie projects, just a phone call away. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to sub, like, comment, share. See you in the next one.